<clears throat> All right, everyone, welcome to part two in the series of tools we use, which is a series I like to show off a different tool or product that I use in a sysadmin day to day world. Um, and if you didn't notice by the thumbnail and the title of this video, today's tool is ChatGPT. So let's go over and take a look. So you may have heard about ChatGPT in the news about how it's writing emails for people, it's doing high schoolers homework, it's it's handling all of these jobs that were done by other folks. And you may have heard of other AI tools that are doing similar features. Um, but what's great about ChatGPT for a sysadmin is it gives you someone to bounce your work off of. Uh, I'm not a great reader of documentation to learn something. A lot of times I'm good at looking at guides of things other people have done, uh, asking coworkers for questions, but sometimes I struggle when it's a giant 300 page manual about a piece of software or about how to program or code. Um, so it's easier for me if, if I have someone to talk to and I don't like interrupting my friends and coworkers who are trying to do their own work with my stupid questions. Um, when, you know, they might know the answer and they might be able to help, but I feel bad bothering them about it all the time. So now I have chat GPT to help me. So let's, uh, let's talk to chat GPT. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, um, how do I use chat GPT? Well, mainly a lot of it is coding based because I did not learn any sort of programming language when I was uh, uh, younger in age and all that. And uh, I probably should have, but I didn't. Uh, and now I'm a little bit behind in the automation game. And that's something we've really been moving forward with a lot in our environment with tools like Foreman and Puppet and Ansible and you know any of these any of these automation tools that exist so i use chat gpt to kind of give me a a starter a primer position and sort of a hey how does this look why am i getting this error type thing so let me show you how to use chat gpt safely as a sysadmin so the first thing you never want to do is you never want to give it any of your actual information so say you wanted to say I want a PowerShell script that will bind a computer to the domain blah.local and put it in a specific OU I have called mega servers, right? None of that's real information. That's not my domain. That's not an OU in my domain. And then I didn't give it any credentials either. Now, and there you go, it spit out a very simple bash, you know, output for a PowerShell script. So you could copy this code, throw it in PowerShell, and from what I can tell, it should work fine. I've I've done this before, um, and that's a good way to, to, to get your feet wet in this. Now, what you don't, also what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna ask it for a script that you can't at least verify somewhat yourself, like say, I have a list of 10,000 names and I need PowerShell to organize them in groups by last name, first letter. I have no idea if this will work at all. It might. And as long as I keep a backup of that list somewhere, I don't mind plugging it in and testing it. That's that's something safe. That's something that I'm not gonna run in production. That's gonna, you know, destroy everything. Or, you know, maybe I want, uh, how do I format a Linux machine using Bash without uh, the process formatting itself? Surely that won't work. Um, just ride zeros through the entire disk. Please don't do that. Please don't ever do that. <laughs> if you're going to do that, now I can tell you a situation that DD is really handy in Linux, and that's if you need to make a bigger swap file. You can just DD and then call it swap and then mount it as extra swap space. Uh, that's this old folks thing going on. Um, but anyway, that is kind of the tool we use. That's ChatGPT. 
Um, it's really helped me get a lot better at PowerShell. It's helped me get a lot better at Puppet. It's helped me get better at using Foreman um, and creating provisioning templates and configuration files and, and things of that nature so that I can make a more automated environment so that I don't have to do as much manual work. Now, does that mean I'm gonna lose my job because of it? Highly unlikely. There's still a lot of things that I do at my job that are very human interactive. Chat GPT can't rack and stack hardware yet. Chat GPT can't really monitor our environment and fix things yet. Um, <laughs> but that's coming. Those kind of things are on the horizon. And that's probably the great thing. I would not be surprised if in the future they don't actually make a Chat GPT, uh, not really administrator, but. Um, chat gpt utilization manager something like that where they pay someone who knows how to talk to chat gpt really efficiently get a lot of stuff done for their environment and then kind of like as a contractor roll them in and roll them out um but this is a, a tool we use and this is admin trade and you'll even notice that i have a paid account it's totally worth the 20 bucks a month uh even if i only use it once a day I'm using it more than any other subscription service I probably have right now. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked what you saw, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Chick would really appreciate it too. And let me know how you use ChatGPT down in the comments below. And we'll see you next time.